Welcome to another episode of Real Talk with Terry, and I'm your host, Terry Cato. Ladies, we're going to just jump right in. First of all, welcome to the set of Real Talk with Terry. Thank, Thank you for having us. Thank you, ladies, for coming. And we're going to just get started. If you guys could um, introduce yourselves and just tell the viewers who you are and what you do, that would be great. Sure. Melanie. Hi, I'm Melanie Akule. I am founder and CEO of Memo LLC. It's a platform for business of color, people of color business owners to meet and learn more about resources and organizations that are looking for them um, to invest their resources and or money in them. Awesome. Thank you. Hello, I'm Leisha Bell. I'm the deal flow lead for Pipeline Angels, which is a organization that's dedicated to helping women and non-binary FEMS get access to capital. Awesome. Thank you so much for coming. I'm excited to do this episode. I'm excited to talk to both of you and for you to just share with the viewers out there just exactly what it is that you guys do as entrepreneurs and female founders and how you support that community. So the first thing I want to throw out there to you and the viewers is something that I read in entrepreneur.com. And basically, um, this is what it says. Women make up one half of the Earth's population, and yet, if you survey the landscape of founders of the most notable tech companies in recent years, Mark Zuckerberg, Brian Chesky, Jack Dorsey, Travis Kalanick, and I mispronounce his name, I don't know, I know that. <laughs> they are all white males. <laughs> that sounds like Kalanick, that's the wrong word, Kalanick. <laughs> Um, these leaders of Facebook, Twitter, Airbnb, and Snapchat give the appearance that founding massively valuable companies is primarily the sport of men. Okay. Mm -hmm. Is it just a coincidence that none of them are women? Mm. Are we to believe that women simply don't create great things? Mm. Or should we instead address the reality that we live in an unbalanced world where the path for female entrepreneurs is much harder? So that just kind of, mm. that stuck with me. Yeah, I heard it. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So let's just talk about that. So yeah, get started. I, I want to talk about what it's like to be a woman, a woman trying to get funding to get access to capital, yeah, right? Absolutely. So, um, we are one half of the population, but we're only 2% of funding in VC today. 2%, and if you're a woman of color, you're not even a percent. Wow. Um, this year, I just met black woman number 37 to get a million in funding of all time VC. Wow. A million. We're, we're, we're at 37. So this is how dismal it is. Mm -hmm. If you're a woman trying to get funding, particularly a woman of color, mm -hmm. it's a very dismal space. Yes. Um, and to break that, we have to disrupt the patterns of what we think the white male architect represents. And so that's kind of, hopefully we will talk about all these dynamics in the course of this show to really challenge that narrative. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, that's something that's definitely near and dear to my heart as a founder and as someone that's entering this landscape looking for funding mm -hmm. um, as I build my business. And it's interesting because the platform that I'm building right now is the platform that I wish would have existed when I first started my journey so mm -hmm. that I could learn more about the game and how it should be played and the pitfalls to look out for because um, there are many. Right. Um, so it's just, it's, it's an interesting landscape, but what excites me is that there are more organizations and there are more resources that are becoming available right. because of this issue. Right, absolutely. Thank you. And Leisha, if you could just talk more about um, how you guys even became acquainted in the yeah. Pipeline Angels, if you could just tell what it is that you guys do, you know, how and why you were founded and, you know, yeah. just talk more about your boot camp and just some of the stuff that you guys are doing. Yeah, so Pipeline Angels was founded in 2012 um, to try to address what we call this, what we think is a, is a pipeline issue. Mm -hmm. They don't exist. We don't see them. Who are they? And so to really disrupt that, um, the way that we think we're going to change the game is by changing who is the investors. Mm -hmm. So if you have the same group of white male investors, you're not, they're going to continue to invest in the same thing that they always invest mm -hmm. in. Yes. And so when you change it and put women in the position of power to make decisions about 
who gets investment, you change the dynamic, right? So we know that women typically care more about family, health, uh, the welfare of the world, and you know, <laughs> we care about a lot of things that impacts a lot of people. Yeah, right. And so when we invest into these more meaningful concepts, not mm -hmm. saying a dating app is not meaningful, but mm -hmm. how much funding do we give to dating apps? You know, like, <laughs> let's invest in more meaningful things. And so that's the whole premise of what Pipeline Angels is. It's a group of women and femmes saying, we're going to put our money and resources mm -hmm. towards women. Mm -hmm. And that's where we're making our bet. And so that's how we're trying to really infiltrate um, and have influence on who we're investing in. Right. And to amplify that there are women entrepreneurs doing this who have been doing this for a long time Absolutely. and have not been getting the reward recognition or the big checks mm -hmm. that we know the white boys get absolutely uh, so that's what we're trying to do here awesome yeah. and um did you want to add anything to that yeah no um i so how i actually met Lisha was yes. through um school from uh, my mba program um but then that led me to pipeline i had not heard about it before i wasn't really aware of um, what they were doing as an organization, mm -hmm. but I found out that they have this pitch summit um, competition, yes. and that's actually something that I signed up for. And it was a really great experience for me to get p pitching experience. It was my second time pitching, um, and then to go through due diligence and mm -hmm. understand what that process is like yes. as a as a very new founder. Right. Um, that whole experience was just eye opening for me, and walking into a room where it was all women. It, it was a very different vibe than what you see on Shark Tank, and you know, and, <laughs> and the aggressiveness that they show on TV when yes. it comes to that. It was it was a much different environment. So I, I really felt like I could walk in there, make the mistakes that I needed to make right. to learn, so to I could learn. get better. Absolutely. And if you could just talk more about pitch, because I know we're throwing some terms out there, and yes. some people yeah. may be like, well, well, what does this mean? What does mm -hmm. that mean? So if you could just talk about like, yeah. what is pitch a pitch summit? What is that? Right. Mm -hmm. So these you've heard. Of, you may have heard of pitch competitions yes. or a pitch. It's where you go and you probably have five minutes, like mm -hmm. five minutes to yeah. pitch your idea to an investor. You have to talk about why this is a good idea, mm -hmm. what market research have you done, why are you the person to lead the company, what kind of team do you have in place, mm -hmm. and to talk about the risks that you see and how you're going to solve it. So you have a very short amount of time, and these can be very intense situations. You could be by yourself <laughs> yeah. Yeah. pitching to like 15, 20 people, 100 people. Wow. Yeah. Um, about like why why is this so important right and you're usually doing this amongst other entrepreneurs who are going next so they're probably looking at 10 15 20 pitches wow in the same environment and you mm -hmm. have to be memorable so it's a very mm -hmm. stressful thing and okay. one thing that a lot of women entrepreneurs don't get is the opportunity to pitch yes. so That's they important. may not get selected to pitch because you have to apply to pitch you don't just walk in and pitch right, right. Yep. and yeah. so the, also, the, the privilege of the male is that they've been pitching so much, they get yeah. better every yeah. time, right? Yeah. So they have this thing mastered, right? Yeah. So we have to get, we give women the space. We're like, listen, you can, you can mess this up. You can mess, you can, you know, not be perfect, mm -hmm. and we're going to give you that grace, mm -hmm. right? Because we want women to be encouraged. Some women pitch and never pitch again yeah. because it was so, <laughs> so traumatizing for them, right? People are like, ah, you're sweating. And they're asking you questions. Mm -hmm. like the the Q&A part mm -hmm. is they're asking you questions. Okay. And if it's your business and something that you've been really close to for so long, right. you can you get kind of protective right. of it. because you're passionate. Right, you're passionate but you need it. the experience of, like, having people poke at you and yes. try and find the gaps and not take it personally and right. you can't practice that on your own like right. you can only do that in that kind of setting so. absolutely and then there was another term you threw out there due diligence mm -hmm. what exactly is due diligence because as a, a business owner we need to do due <laughs> diligence <laughs> right so can we talk about some due diligence yeah, yeah. yeah. so you're like preaching to the choir right <laughs> so if you were applying for a job they would do a reference check yes. or a background check yep. Mm -hmm. So it's very similar concept to mm -hmm. when, when we're saying, you know, we kind of like this company. Let's do some due diligence. Yes. It means we're going to go to the gutter to find yeah. everything about <laughs> yeah. you, okay. this company, yeah. Yeah. your business model, mm -hmm. um, what artifacts are you going to present us? What are we going to discover mm -hmm. on our own mm -hmm. that you didn't give us? Okay. And so it's a pretty intense 
time, right? Yeah. So if you haven't thought that much, you will. Okay, yeah. guys. Yes. We're going to ask you these questions. Great. That's great. Right. So yeah. the one thing about women investors, yeah. we we hold our money to our vest, right? Yeah. So we're not just writing checks for nothing, <laughs> right? You're going to have to work really hard yeah. to, to to get this money. Right. So that's what due diligence is, okay. right? And once you go through this process, mm -hmm. particularly with pipeline, you can yeah. go out there to any VC, honestly, and it'll probably be a lot easier because <laughs> it's pretty tough. Yeah. Okay. No, there, 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 <laughs> there were times where, um, so the, the investors that were on my particular deal flow, they would email me and say, hey, do you have this document? And I'd be like, no, but I'm going to make it real quick. <laughs> I'm going to make it into note, right? <laughs> Just because, I, again, as a first time you know, founder, yeah, very early, like this was my first time going through it. So right. I'm like, I don't have it, but give me 30 minutes. <laughs> and I will create it. Right. Exactly. Right. But it, to, to Alicia's point, it was really going through that stress and going through that that process was really really beneficial because now mm -hmm. i at least have a foundation Absolutely. and i've been able to use that mm -hmm. those artifacts again later um so def definitely right. worthwhile experience. so that's great so it sounds like you pitch and then you go through due diligence and then you mentioned something about deal flow so I'm sure this is all information yes. and it's education yeah. for women out there. So so what's like a deal flow? So the way that Pipeline Angels works is we, um, everyone goes to our website to apply. So mm -hmm. we have a blind process. Okay. So. So, that, so if someone is a female founder and they, they're like, okay, I need funding. I want to yes. take this to the next level. Yes. So that's what they should do. They should like go to your website or. Yes. Pipelineangels.com. And then apply. <laughs> apply to the pitch summit. Okay. Right. We review the applications and the investors choose who gets to pitch. Awesome. So we host this pitch in about 10 to 12 different cities in the U.S. They come pitch, and then from that we narrow it down and say, who are we going to do due diligence on? So out of yeah. a group of 10 to 15, you may choose three oh, wow. to do due diligence okay. on. And then you go, um, and we narrow that down to one Got or it. two that okay. you might fund. Got and then it. so once they say, we like this company, they're going to take it to the entire Pipeline Angel Network. That's 400 plus women mm -hmm. and say hey we want to raise some real capital for this nice mm -hmm. you know and that's how we increase how much it's like fundraising yes mm -hmm. basically for yeah. a female founder so Got it. so when people talk about their deal flow it's yes. like what companies are in your portfolio who are you looking at and this is yeah. very covenant list protected by vcs yes mm -hmm. right yes. because that's how they keep the network so insular right Got they it. have access yeah. to premium deal flows they keep that in their network and that's how they grow Got it. Okay. And you mentioned something um, that's very important. Like um, you mentioned that Melanie, um, she went through the process, yeah. but was not funded. But right. you encourage women, even if you're not funded, don't be discouraged because it's just the process. So do you want to mm -hmm. address that a little bit more? Because sometimes, as you mentioned, you know, as business owners, something is very close to your heart. You're very passionate about it. Yeah. So it's almost like you feel like if somebody says no to you, that they're almost like rejecting yeah. you. Or But yeah. it's like, no, it's like, they're not necessarily rejecting you, but maybe it's just not the time yeah. or, you know, so if you can just talk more about that, because yeah. I know as women, you know, it, sometimes for some of us, it might be, you might, they might get easily discouraged or we may get easily discouraged, right. but just if you could address that a little bit more. Yeah. I mean, so there is like very little reward without risk. Yep. And, you know, I want to encourage yeah. all of us to be risk takers, right? Yes. Yeah. Like you have to be. Go to a website, just throw it out there, right? No. Like, it's like yeah. one page, you you know, you don't have to have all the stuff together. So go out there, get out there, get in the queue. If you get to pitch, you get to practice pitching. Mm -hmm. And so what happens is, so she was chosen to go due diligence. She now has five female investors, advisors that she has mm -hmm. in her site. You know they didn't choose to invest, yep. and she can talk about that in a minute. Mm -hmm. They're still part of her network that she didn't have mm -hmm. access to before. Absolutely. Right? Yes. And so what we're also, what we do on these deal flow calls, we may say, hey, we might not invest, but who's an expert in retail e-commerce? Mm -hmm. Who's an expert mm -hmm. in this? And we'll pat, we'll share our network with you mm -hmm. because we, we're we very founder friendly and centric. We want mm -hmm. you to excel. We want mm -hmm. you to be in this space. And it might not be now, but next year, you might call me back with another company you started and say, hey, Alicia, mm -hmm. you know, some people might be interested. And it's like, okay, let's talk. Mm -hmm. So you just never know. I mean, we often say we're betting on the founder's next company. Yes. <laughs> okay. <laughs> right? Okay, yep. Interesting. It may not be this yeah, one. Right, but, but if you look at the CEOs of these companies, mm -hmm. like, you know, Facebook's not Mark's first company. I mean, like, these founders okay. come up with multiple ideas over time. Mm -hmm. And right. then they, if you, um, a company where I work at called PayPal. People know about the PayPal Mafia. These mm -hmm. group of founders have Elon yeah. Musk, the founders mm -hmm. of Yelp, YouTube, wow. um, Solar City. Yeah, they yeah. all come from the same nucleus. Same yeah. nucleus. Yeah. Wow. So if yeah. you find, I'm trying to be her best friend. <laughs> she 
gonna blow up, right? I hope it's this company, but it might yeah. be her next, and, be and I want to be in her network. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. you may talk about your no, experience. no, that that's absolutely big facts. Um, for me, I so had it been like two or three years ago, I think I would have been in my feelings just mm -hmm. because as a, as a new founder, you're you're very sensitive to every piece of critical like critical mm -hmm. feedback. Yeah. It's just it's over. It's it's a lot, um, <laughs> but. After this process, I was like, okay, well, an investment may not have made sense right now because mm -hmm. we, we were very early. We mm -hmm. didn't have as much traction or um, proof of success as some of the other people we competed against. Mm -hmm. So that was completely fair. Um, but to Leisha's point, now I have access to Leisha and to the other um, angels that were on my deal so I can ask them questions about, hey, want to look at my pitch deck? I've revised it. Can you yes. give me feedback? Mm -hmm. Hey, this is my business model. What do you think? This is the product roadmap. What do you think? So each and every piece along the way, I have the ability to ask them questions and get feedback and mm -hmm. really make sure that I'm moving in the right direction right. so that if I do choose to go back, I have a much stronger product a much stronger business to present absolutely and like Leisha said you have a nucleus you have mm -hmm. a network to pull from mm -hmm. and let's just talk about how important that is we were just oh, kind of chatting it up before we started yeah. taping <laughs> yes. and and I kind of shared you know just early in my career in corporate America one of the things that I realized that I did not have access to was right. a career mentor yeah. right. and I think that's the same thing for a lot of black and minority women is that mm -hmm. we don't have access to or maybe we don't realize the importance of having mentors whether it be mm -hmm. a business or an entrepreneur mentor or right. just a life mentor a career mentor we need somebody that's a little bit further along in the process mm -hmm. to right. hold our hand mm -hmm. and to sometimes just be a sounding board yeah. right yeah. and and could we just talk about yeah. that? Because I would imagine in the world of entrepreneurs, yeah. I mean, it's it's yeah. minuscule that our female founders just yeah. I, you know, Melanie can speak better than I can, but mm -hmm. it's extremely lonely being a founder. Yeah. <laughs> it's extremely lonely, right? Yeah. Especially <laughs> if you're all in, yeah. you quit your job, yeah. right? Yeah. It's very isolating yeah. <laughs> to be there, right? And so you kind of just need like a crew. Oh, yeah, you need somebody who's like. Okay, <laughs> just check me, check me on this one yeah. time, or encourage mm -hmm. me, or yes. like, you know, that's really not a good idea. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you have to take it. One founder sent me this pitch, I think it's a horrible name. Right. Well, we like it, okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, good luck. Yeah. And you might be fine. I mean, sometimes you have yeah. to say, I'm gonna take that, I'm not gonna take this, mm -hmm. but it's like, mm -hmm. you know, most, Startups fail. Most small businesses fail. Right. Like most, right? Right. 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 So you're kind of going against the odds anyway. anyway. Mm -hmm. And so if you don't have a support, and this is why, you know, this access to capital is an issue because, you know, it could it may not be because you had a bad idea. You can have a good idea, but you didn't have access. So if you live outside, for Black women, if you live outside of San Francisco, New York, or LA, mm -hmm. your likelihood of funding is slim. If you live in Alabama, <laughs> <laughs> that's where people are from. Yes. Right? Try to do a startup in Alabama. <laughs> oh Lord. Right. So if you if you're far away from this nucleus, yeah. right? How do you tap into it? How do yeah. you get into it? Right? Yeah, you absolutely. have to like actively get into those spaces. So you yeah. gotta seek it out. Mm -hmm. It's not coming to you. Right. It's no. not gonna come to you. No. Nope. You know, um, so that's Yeah. No, definitely, you were speaking to my soul. <laughs> <laughs> you were talking about that. There was one time I realized that I had not left my apartment for five days straight. Wow. You know, like just, because you just get, you wake up, go to, go right. to your desk, you're mm -hmm. cranking away, and mm -hmm. you just repeat, repeat, repeat. And yes, yeah, so um, now I try to leave my apartment, you know, yes. go to co-working spaces, uh -huh. go to founder-related events. The Bay Area yes. is really good for, for those. There's a lot of, you know, entrepreneurship-related events. So you can at least try and network. Right. Um, but yeah, no, to, to your career networking piece though, mm -hmm. literally was just having a conversation about this this morning about the fact that spe specifically black women, we work really, really hard and we don't necessarily learn how to play the corporate game, yes. right? We don't necessarily learn that, yes, you can sit at your desk all day and do all the great work, but if someone doesn't know that you're doing it, Thank if you, you aren't at the happy hours, if you aren't like, you're not getting promoted. So right. it's interesting that you bring that mm -hmm. up. Literally oh, absolutely. I, lo I live that <laughs> at my <laughs> desk, yeah. cranking out the work. And yeah. they're like, hey, Terry, come and go to lunch with us. And I'm like, no, I brought my lunch. And you know, <laughs> right. and not knowing that, right. that's how you build that's relationships. When, that's you when the promotions are the made. Lunch, right. At the hookah parties. bar. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Mm -hmm. You go to the, the happy hours. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, no, I don't drink with my coworkers, no. you know, but. Yeah. Uh, I did not know that. <laughs> right. 
<laughs> and I learned it at the tail end. Mm -hmm. Like, do you want to go to lunch, Terry? Yes. Let me just shut this down. <laughs> right, Let me right, stop right. it. So no. it's like I learned that it's never too late. No. But I learned it into my journey, and I'm like, I wish mm -hmm. I had known this three or four years mm -hmm. ago when I right. started this position yeah. versus right. when I know I'm out the door. Yeah. Out the door. Right. But, so, <laughs> so anyway, so for example, if you have a female founder in Alabama. Like yes. where I'm from. Yes. What advice? How do you just, what do they need to do? Because like you said, it's not coming to them. So right. if there's someone that, because we do release these episodes after they air on YouTube. So I do have family in Alabama and yes. I have friends across Texas and um, in Mississippi that will see this. Mm -hmm. um, what advice do you have for women that are female founders and business owners in these isolated pockets who may say, I'm ready to take my business to the next level. Like, like, what do I need to do? Mm -hmm. What, what do you have any of us? There, there are. So the thing is, there are there are many resources. Mm -hmm. It it takes work to find them. There's a lot mm -hmm. of articles and stuff coming out now around the few organizations like Pipeline Angels, like yes. Backstage Capital, like Precursor Ventures that mm -hmm. are focusing on founders of color, business yes. owners of color. Um, so I would start there with the Google search that are, you know, okay. for those, because those exist. Okay. Um, and then there are newsletters. Yes. I feel like every organization now has a newsletter. Okay. Um, that is sending out resources related to mm -hmm. places and things and um, organizations they can go to to help them grow their businesses. Mm -hmm. um, so that's definitely the first step. Okay. And then it, it's just really, it's about not being afraid to build your network. I feel like when you have a, a business idea, people want to keep it really close to the chest and be like, you know, this is my baby and not yes. really talk about it or someone else will steal it. Right. Um, but it's almost the exact opposite. Mm -hmm. The more you talk about it, the more you let people know what you're doing, mm -hmm. the more it's like a domino effect, okay. right? So someone hears about it and like, oh, I remember this person was doing this. Let me connect them to this person. Mm -hmm. um, so it really, you, you have to be active in building out your own network. Okay, all right. Yeah, and, and if you're able to travel mm -hmm. um ex conferences i mean yeah. okay conferences. I, I love yeah. south by southwest we have like mm -hmm. an underground black and southwest event <laughs> where the yeah. black people gather yeah. <laughs> we have latin x at southwest yeah. i mean there's okay. all these subcultures of these mm -hmm. conferences there's yeah. afrotech's coming to open this year okay. um if you can get out and get in some of those spaces Absolutely. and just to disrupt your network because mm. right here in silicon valley everybody works in tech right yeah. like yeah it, it's just homogenous to this area but once mm -hmm. you leave and you don't have access to people in that industry mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know it's like how do i get them i get a mm -hmm. lot of random notes on linkedin like send mm -hmm. put yourself out there like yeah. mine yeah. <laughs> I, respond. I was doing research because i knew i wanted to do this segment and i was like huh let me find let me just yeah. reach out so like mm -hmm. my Yep. Put yourself exactly. out there. People exactly. send me their pitch decks all the time, yeah. you know. Okay. Yeah. And awesome. you just have to be bold, you mm -hmm. know, so that people know who you are. Yes. You know, mm -hmm. get to a hub here in the South. Atlanta's a big hub for tech mm -hmm. now. Yes. Amazon. I mean, it's got all mm -hmm. this tech growing in these mm -hmm. nucleuses. So try right. to get closer. Miami's yeah. growing. Mm -hmm. These incubators okay. can be can be helpful. Okay. Yeah. So that's all great advice for um for women who mm -hmm. may find themselves a little isolated. Yeah. You you're about to say something. No. Uh, also, um, another resource I thought of is Founder Gym. Mm -hmm. So if you are absolutely brand new to the whole investment scene yes. and investment landscape all the jargon that we were throwing out right because it's a lot of jargon. <laughs> exactly <laughs> and just just getting like grounded in the space founder mm -hmm. gyms are really great way to do that okay. and they're affiliated with kapoor capital mm -hmm. so i should mention okay. that they're also big on uh, minority um startups got it okay well this sounds great now is there anything else that you want to share or you want to talk about or yeah i would just say that um i'm really focus on getting more women investing. Yes. Uh, and so if you are a woman who is an accredited investor, which means you have a million net worth, you have $200,000 in earned income, or you and your partner have $300,000, um, please come to Pipeline Angels. Um, if you can't be an entrepreneur, you can invest in one, you can support one. Yes. So mm -hmm. think about how you can participate in this space um, or if you want to start something, start it. You know, um, we we need we're so underrepresented that we need we need you. Right. <laughs> so this, yeah. is, this is a plea. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Anything else you want to um, add? I guess just a couple of things. First is entrepreneurship is a very long journey. Yes. Um, I'm going into year four and we're still not making millions of dollars. Um, <laughs> but, but, 
<laughs> but these are the years that you know you, you don't hear about when it comes to Facebook and the yes. Snapchats and the right. Instagrams. Like yes. they they had their pivots and they had their ups and downs and starts and stops and it's a part of the story. And as painful as it might be to go through at times, mm -hmm. it's the part that I would not skip because mm -hmm. once those millions of dollars come, it, it just makes it that much better, right? right. So if, you, if this is something that you, if you have an idea and you wanna pursue it, I definitely recommend you go through with it. Um, and you find that life kind of just conspires to help you along the way. You know, you, you worry about, well, how will I you know, pay for myself to be able to do this? Or how, if I leave my job, like all of those worries that we end up um, keeping in in front of us getting to our destiny, mm -hmm. they just they figure themselves out. So okay. don't worry too much about that. And then I think the second thing is I'm this ex this excites me this conversation because yeah. of, of the product that I'm building. I mentioned earlier I'm building what I wish existed mm -hmm. um, for me as far as what resources are available to me as a black woman. We right. hear the negative media all the time. We hear the funds that didn't close. We hear the lack of funding that you know, that doesn't get to our population right. and just creating something that can benefit the next. So we have what, the 37th? Angel Rich. Yes. Check her out. <laughs> so hopefully we can facilitate, you know, more of that happening. So. Absolutely. Okay. Well, thank you, ladies. Okay. So um, as we get ready to wrap, um, is there any advice that you would give to someone who is, you know, they're, they're young in the journey or they haven't even started a business? Like, mm -hmm. what should they do? Because I hear people all the time when they hear that you're an entrepreneur, they're like, oh, well, I had this idea or I thought about doing this or thought about doing that. What do you have any advice that you would give to people that are just thinking about starting a business? Like, what would be some of your advice that you would shell out to them just if they haven't launched yet but they want to launch yeah i would say um don't be discouraged if your idea sounds like another idea or you see something mm. that you just want to increment yes right uh, it's all in the execution a lot of yes. people have the same yes. ideas yes. all the time That's but true. it's, Back, it's it? the execution <laughs> yeah, so right. you know as an investor we're like okay how are you going to pull it off how mm. is your model unique how are you mm. different how are you personally the person Mm -hmm. to lead the way. So I think mm -hmm. if you think about from that angle, like, can yes. I execute on this idea mm -hmm. better? Yes. Um, that's really compelling. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's great advice because I myself, I'm like, well, no, somebody's already doing that. Mm -hmm. And I would right. imagine there's a lot of people, especially women, that think, oh, yeah. well, somebody's already doing that, so right. I won't worry about it. But you're right. How can you tweak it? How can you make it a little bit better, more efficient? Yeah. That's great. There's a thousand videos yeah. on YouTube on how to contour. <laughs> you know? Right? And I watch know? all of them because someone might tell me a different technique right. I have not tried right <laughs> absolutely <laughs> so anything that somebody just think about launching yeah no I so I actually work with a lot of you know business owners and I feel like what they end up doing is thinking really big mm. right when it comes to execution yes. they they end up scaring themselves because like oh I have to have a website in order to do this or I have to have something that's really expensive but no you can you can start with a survey right mm -hmm. if a survey might get you where you need, or you can start manually. You may not have any technology to start what you're doing, um, but as long as you can do something small, mm -hmm. you know, on paper, you know, out of the trunk of your car, whatever you need to do mm -hmm. to prove that there is a need or a desire for it, that's what gets you going. Okay. And that's actually what investors want to see because it's not about the glitz and the glam. It's mm -hmm. the, will this make money? Will someone buy it? Okay. And if you can prove that, that's half the battle. Awesome. All right. Well, this has been great. Thank you, ladies, for joining me at not the red table talk, but our <laughs> black <Right>. table talk. <laughs> so um, we're going to go ahead and close this episode out. So I just want to thank you guys again for spending some time with me today. And I want to thank all of you again for tuning in to another episode of Real Talk with Terry. So make this one count and have a nice evening. Have a great day. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.